I thought I'd share a story with you, one of my favourite tales from the county of Cheshire. And this took place in the village of Moston, which is just a small place. If you went looking for it now, you'd find it betwixt Sandbach and Middlewich. And the people in Moston, well, they were a happy and a jolly lot. And they made their living picking apples from the trees that grew in the orchard there, just at the edge of their village. Now, these apples, they were the biggest in all of Cheshire. Everybody else was jealous of them. Nobody really knew why they grew that big. But I know, and I'll tell you, the apples in that orchard... Well, they grew because of the water from a swamp just next to it. This sludgy, slimy swamp was filled with dark, dank swamp water. And the apple trees, they sent their roots out through the soil, stretching into the swamp. The water made its way along those roots. It made its way up the trunk and stretched along the branches until it caused those apples to swell and swell. Well, the people in Moston, they would wait all through the summer, looking forward to the end of summer, the beginning of autumn, when those apples were just ripe to be picked. And then here it was, the day had come, and somebody said, yes, today's the day. Everybody grabbed their buckets, their baskets, whatever they needed to collect those apples. And they all went out to whichever apple tree was the one that they themselves looked after. And they set down their buckets and their baskets and they began to pick all of the apples and they were singing, there was much jollity, they were joking and everybody having a good time until somebody said, stop, look, at what's that up there? And they looked and they looked up through the branches and the leaves of the trees and high up in the sky, they saw something the like of which they'd never seen before. So they're not quite like a bird, didn't move like a bird, it was much larger than the bird and their interest grew and grew until it changed to horror when they realised this wasn't a bird. This was a dragon and a dragon began to circle around and around and the dragon you could tell it had come from wales because it was red it was looking for a new home though now you might have heard that dragons like to live in caves and that's true enough but it's not their first choice you might have heard that dragons like to live in a burial mound of some ancient king surrounded by his treasure and that again is true but still not their first choice their first choice if they could get it would be to live in this stinky slimy sludgy swamp and what was there that just next to that orchard at Moston but just such a swamp and the dragon it circled round and then it came and settled in that swamp now the people of Moston they weren't fools they knew that if they went close to that dragon they would likely be eaten up but then they wondered how could they get their apples grown in that orchard so there was one brave chap and he said, I've got a plan, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set off with my basket and I'll go to the apple tree and I'll set it down and I'll be looking at that dragon the whole time and if the dragon makes the slightest movement towards me, I'll be off. And that was his plan. And so off he set with that basket and he went towards his tree and he looked at the dragon the whole time. The dragon was asleep in that swamp. He set down the basket, the dragon was just snoring and he started to pick his apples, always looking at the dragon until the next apple he found it was a bit too high. He looked away for a moment and when he looked back there was a dragon right upon him. The dragon opened its mouth and it breathed on him. Not fire as you might expect, no it breathed the most disgusting, foul, stinky breath you'd probably rather not imagine. And this brave man breathing in, he fainted. The dragon pulled him into the swamp where he lay asleep the whole day until he awoke just in time for dragon supper time and he was gobbled up that was the end of him and this happened again and again and again until about half those people in moston had been eaten by the dragon and as you imagine they changed from being the happy jolly lot that they once were into being a sad miserable lot and it was that day that sir thomas venables the local lord of the manor who owned all of the land thereabouts including moston he came to inspect his lands he came to the village of moston he said what's happened here has there been a war? There's less of you than there were before. You're all miserable. And what's happened to your fine apple trees? And they explained to him, they said, Sir Thomas, there's been a dragon has come to the village and settled in the swamp just outside. Anybody that goes close, the dragon breathes on them. It's such foul breath that they are overcome. They are dragged into the swamp and, well, they're gobbled up. And what's worse, just this morning, a young boy has been taken. His poor mother, she's already lost her husband. She'll have nobody to help her. Well, Sir Thomas being a bold and a brave knight, he said, I shall slay that dragon and rescue the boy. And so with that, off he set. He made his way through the village, through the orchard, and he could see the dragon asleep in the swamp. 
and the young boy asleep next to him. And he began to run, but the clanking and the clattering of his armour awoke the dragon. And the dragon looked towards Sir Thomas. And Sir Thomas knew what was going to happen, so he turned and he fled. But not like a coward. No, he fled to think of another idea. He was a determined man. And he thought back, and he thought long and hard, back to the days before he'd been a knight in armour, to the days when he'd been an archer, armed with bow and arrow. And as he came from Cheshire, that made him one of the Cheshire archers. And as is well known, they're the best archers in the world. Better even than Robin Hood himself. In fact, in Cheshire, we'd say, Robin Hood, Robin, <coughs> no good. Yes, if only he could find his old longbow. And he went into his barn, and there he found it. But it was now a bit twisted. The old yew bow had started to lose its shape. He found the manky mildew bowstring and one, just one lonely arrow, but he would make it count. He returned there to the orchard. He drew back the bowstring and he let loose the arrow and it whistled through the air and found its target right in the dragon's eye. Ah! cried the dragon. It was upon Sir Thomas. He had no more arrows and the dragon there right upon him, about to breathe, but the shock of the arrow in its eye had so wounded and winded the dragon, it could not summon up any of that foul breath. Well, Sir Thomas did not waste any time. He struck the dragon over the head ten times. One, two, three, ten. And just to be sure, he cut off its head. He carried the head back to the village of Moston and that under this arm, the young boy under the other arm, and he arrived there and said, there's your dragon, which I've slain. Here's the young boy safely returned. And the people of Mosson said to Thomas, This is such a bold, brave deed, it must never be forgotten. No longer should you have on your coat of arms just a lion. That's too plain. Now from this day on, you should have the emblem of a dragon with an arrow in its eye, about to eat a boy. And so that is exactly what the Venables family took as their coat of arms. They even carved it in oak and set it up in the church of St. Michael and All Angels in Middlewich, where it can still be seen today. And that is a tale of the Dragon of Moston, the last dragon to be seen in England. And there it was in the centre of the fair county of Cheshire.